Hello my friends and welcome, let's go to the front lines update at first. We have some of the changes near to Nova Prokopovka and it seems like Ukraine broke through the Surovikin line near to Verboa. Step by step, let's go to the news. Let's zoom into Nova Prokopovka and there is the advancement of Ukrainian army in this area. Yes, maybe just around 100 meters, but it's very important because Russia created the defense lines in that area. They have reinforcements from paratroopers so they are quite capable actually providing defense for Nova Prokopovka. For how long, we are out of clue. But Ukraine started to use lots of the artillery shells, including the rocket artillery systems, more often than usual. Plus, Ukraine is busy creating the defense line in that area because, according to the information we have, Russia tries to perform the counteroffensive operation, trying to get Robotina under control. Today, they got that attempt unsuccessfully. So here we have the Russian tank that was driving on the full speed with infantry on board towards Robotina. Later on it was hit by the mines, two of them. Behind the tank there were infantry vehicles and the Russian rocket artillery system towards Salzburg. Maybe it was the coincidence, but after Russian infantry left the tank, they start to run towards the Russian positions, retreating, and Salzburg opened the fire exactly on the place where tank found its end, so infantry was under the friendly fire. The Salzburg shells are not the standard, they are bar shells. Then those shells explode, they create the high pressure area at some certain point, and it's turned that hits up the ear to the very high temperatures. That is why it's very dangerous, especially for infantry, and their own infantry went under their own shells, which is kind of strange. So now Russia tries to find out the way how to perform the counterattack because they have the resources for it. Around 10,000 paratroopers that were sent to the enemy side in Nova Prokopivka. They're quite useless in defense, but in offense, paratroopers are way more efficient for the Russian army, so probably they're gonna use them for that purpose. Nevertheless, as you can see, now it's turn for Ukraine to take the ground, and today we took some. If we go to the other military map resources, source, we can see that Ukraine in the last 24 hours was able to gain some of the territories. Ukraine also confirms the other break through the Russian Solarikin line. As you can see, the Solarikin line consists of two which Ukraine penetrated around three weeks ago, and this is the other one, the final line for this part of the Russian defense, but there is the other line further behind the Verboa village. So generally we have the first line over here and the second line over here. And this is some sort of the intermediate defense line that Russia built just between two of the villages. However, it's not all. There are hundreds of the trenches around this area which Russia uses for their defense. That is why it's hard to move through. Those are just the main trenches, the Dragon Tees and stuff like that. Also, it seems like Ukraine made it uh, through those defense lines, so basically we are very close to the Nova Prokopovka village. From this place and from this place, Ukraine may start a simultaneous attack on the village. How successful it will be, only time shows. In general, as you already mentioned, probably we don't see the huge frontline move for a very long time. Compared to the last year, for example, then Ukraine liberated lots of its territories. This time it's much harder, but Ukraine and Russia actually concentrated more on cutting supply lines and targeting the infrastructure of the enemy. For example, Ukraine is now concentrated on Crimea a lot. Yesterday it was one of the most massive drone attacks performed on Nova Fedorovka airfield. Russia says that they've shot down many of the drones, but Ukrainian officials say that Ukrainian drones hit the military infrastructure in that particular airfield. Yet we are out of the video or photo confirmation about the successful attack. However, locals reported the ground explosions and some of them were filmed on a phone camera, but from the very long distance it's hard to tell what exactly was targeted in Saki military airfield. Also, it is very important for Ukraine to accumulate many of the air defense rockets and 
and systems, because just yesterday Russia started one more wave of their attacks on Ukrainian civilian infrastructure. Many of the Ukrainian towns and cities were targeted by the Russian drones and cruise missiles. Unfortunately, the civilian casualties were reported. That's the big difference actually between Ukraine and the Russian Federation. Ukraine is concentrating on cutting the Russian military infrastructure and Russia targets mostly civilians. We have the analysis from the other military experts and they confirm that Ukraine broke through the Russian Sorovikin line near to Verboa. At least there were some of the videos filmed on the drone that shows Ukrainian army is behind the main defense systems that Russia were building for a very long time. Let me show you basically because it's hard to understand. So this is the Surovikin line with the anti-tank trench with Dragon Tis, etc. And here the battle was reported. Here is the Verbova village already. The battle is quite far away from the Surovikin line. At least three of the fields, so I guess more than one and a half kilometers maybe one mile. And it is already very close to Verbova. This is the Surovikin line, as you may see, this is the tank trench and this is the Dragon Tis. Here we have one gap and there is the other gap, you may see it on satellite images. And here is the road that made for the vehicles and the infantry. About the Ukrainian attack carried on the Russian military base close to Sevastopol. I told you about it in my last video yesterday, but today we have the confirmation from the satellite images what really was kaboomed over there. So here you can see the big building, the Russian military branch. Let's watch what happened to it. So this is the new satellite image, the part of the building is totally demolished, this part still does exist. The kaboom was really severe, Ukraine used the Storm Shadow cruise missiles or maybe the French scalps, which is the same. So I am still waiting the confirmation about the Ukrainian successful attack on Novoferdovka airfield in Saki, something like that at least. It seems like Kadyrov and his relative are still in the Moscow hospital. It's a very strange situation, I would say, and today at 5 p.m. Moscow time there were reports that many of the Chechen vehicles entered the territory of that hospital. The ways for the other cars to this particular building of the hospital were blocked by the Russian police. Also, the helicopter was reported to land on the territory of the hospital. Is it because of the relative of Kadyrov? Hmm, who knows? There is the new video published with Kadyrov, he is speaking with the Russian emergency situation minister. From what I can see on that calendar, they really want to show that it was filmed today. Based on many of the video evidence, it looks like Kadyrov finally, after all, is okay. Alright, we have the good news and the bad news. The good news is that the United States of America will transfer the new military aid or help or package, you may call it, to the Ukrainian army. But the bad news that there will be no attackers missiles this time, as Biden says. Even though many of the congressmen and Pentagon officials agreed to transfer those missiles to Ukraine, President Biden still struggles to let this to happen. But it is just for now, I still expect that Ukraine gets attackers missiles, probably not this year, but maybe for the spring military campaign. This afternoon Biden met with President Zelensky in the White House, so Biden promised that first Abrams tanks will go to Ukraine the next week. I heard that some of the pro-Russian bloggers say that it takes the United States forever to deliver those tanks to Ukraine, but it's not the easy job for those particular tanks. You need also logistics, maintenance and the proper supplies for the spare parts. Abrams is not the Leopard or not the Challenger tank, so it is way more complicated for Ukrainian army to handle that tank. From the logistics point of view, as the machine, Abrams tanks are all Alright, I see the signs for de-escalation of the situation with the Ukrainian grains, with Poland, Slovakia and even Hungary. Today we have the comments from the Polish side as well as from the Ukrainian side. And Ukraine is willing to withdraw the application for 
the international court for now just against Slovakia because they sorted out the limits for Ukrainian grain that will go to Slovakia. For Poland and Hungary, I think it will be the same. Also, the president of Poland dismissed the information that Poland stopped supplying weaponry to Ukraine. He said that the prime minister of Poland told just about the weaponry that Poland buys for its own army. Poland already transferred the majority of the Soviet-made weaponry, including the fighter jets. Plus, Poland is the country which transferred the most tanks to Ukraine. I think more than 250 tanks plus the artillery systems like Krab. So definitely Poland plays a great role for Ukrainian defense. We are actually at the same boat with Poland because I am sure if Russia takes Ukraine under control later on it will try to get Poland using Ukrainians in their army. Actually it was the plan for Putin from the very beginning. He didn't want to fight in Ukraine for a very long time. He wanted to put the puppet government and later on use Ukrainians as he now uses Chechens for his own army. Poland knows that, that is why they are buying the new weaponry for their army. Probably it's the only country in the European Union that seriously prepares for the future war with Russia. Whether they would need that weaponry, I hope not. That is why it's very important for Ukraine to hold, to fight against Russia and win this war, also for Europe. Today some of the Lithuanian media resources spread the information that there was the meeting between Lithuanian president, President Zelensky and the Polish president, but actually it's not true. It wasn't like that, this photo is quite old. So what happened? Zelensky spoke with Lithuanian president and separately Polish President Duda spoke with Lithuanian President. That is how they exchanged the information about the grain deal. So Lithuanian President is the mediator now between Poland and Ukraine. But Andrzej Duda said that Zelensky is still his friend and Poland will continue supporting Ukraine. It's awesome. Let's continue with the news that I don't really like. Those are considering Zaluzhny, the general commander of Ukrainian army, who does a lot for Ukrainian army to win in this war. And actually, he's very successful in his command. But someone tries to accuse him for surrendering the South territories of Ukraine in the beginning of the war. We all understand that the defense of the South, especially from Crimea, was very poorly done by the Ukrainian side. And now some of the Ukrainian politicians created the commission for investigation of the case. Zaluzhny hasn't been prosecuted yet, but he was asked many questions by the commission. But what worries me that we have some of the insights from that commission that probably Zaluzhny will be accused in the future. Between each other, they call this investigation the Zaluzhny case. I'm 100% sure that Zaluzhny has nothing to do with that betrayal that was happening on the south. The betrayal mostly comes from the politicians. Ask everyone from Mariupol about their mayor who called to ruin all of the barricades that were made by Ukrainian army around Mariupol and just before the war happened he fled his own city. Obviously the military command is involved in that betrayal of the south. But not Zaluzhny. Just one week ago, one of the high rank Ukrainian military official who was the witness in this case of betrayal somehow lost his life. Police say that it was some sort of the suicide, but I do not believe that. Definitely, the surrender of the South was planned before. We know that mines were removed on the ways from Crimea. But for me personally, the information is not enough to find the exact trace of who was responsible for that. But I can feel some terrible smell coming from the Ukrainian politician elite. I believe that what they are doing right now with Zaluzhny is just the removal of the competitor for the future elections. I am not speaking about the president elections, however honestly Zaluzhny has the great trust from the Ukrainian society. I am speaking about general, about the military, soldiers who are not really presented in Ukrainian parliament or politician life. Moreover, the Ukrainian parliament tries to block the candidacy of the veterans to be presented in the parliament elections. That's totally crazy. Well, I'm now not in Ukraine and I can speak about it 
finally you see that ukraine has the downsides too and we are just on the way for the developed democratic society the ukrainian society and the ukrainian military will never agree with that the ukrainian government is digging its own hole accusing zaluzhny not yet but in the future they may try to do it great news from sweden they transferred 10 of the street wagon 122 tanks to Ukrainian army. Those are the analogs of the Leopard 2 tanks. Our soldiers have already passed the training to operate those tanks. Because it is mostly the same as the Leopard 2, there will be less issues with the spare parts, logistics and repairs. We need many of the tanks. As you see, Ukrainian army also has losses in the Leopard 2 tanks. Even the Challenger 2 was lost the last month and probably the same destiny awaits for some of the Abrams tanks because it it's a war, it's the full-scale war, the biggest one since the World War II, where every weaponry is in use, including aviation and even submarines. By the way, about the submarines, the commander of the Northern Submarine Fleet, the Russian Colonel, his name was Ivan Kavgan, he also was the deputy commander of the Russian peacekeepers in so-called Nagorny Karabakh that recently went back to Azerbaijan. And you probably heard the news that the Russian off-road vehicle UAS was ambushed by Azerbaijani military. Indeed, this guy was over there and he lost his life. The commander of the Russian submarine fleet, the captain of the submarine, lost his life in the mountains quite logical we have some of the images of that ambushed vehicle i cannot fully show them to you by the way you may check out my telegram channel there i publish lots of the videos images and the information that i am unable to publish over here you may find it in the video description just below we have already 230,000 subscribers on telegram who are following my daily updates over there then i have some turn information i upload on my page on telegram just immediately so my guys on telegram already knew the story at first i thought that this car was ambushed from behind because there are lots of the holes but later on i saw this part of the wreckage so the holes are outcoming not incoming and usually they are much wider than incoming holes for me it was strange because there is the big sign of the peacekeepers on the back but actually the car was hit from the front so those are the incoming holes from the automatic rifles most of the bullets went to the windshield straight and there is also the sign it's over here but it's hard to identify from the long distance those peacekeepers should have put some sort of the sign just in the front of the radiator or somewhere there otherwise it's really hard to identify this vehicle from the front the president of azerbaijan aliyev already apologized about this coincidence to the russian president putin well it means that everything is okay putin doesn't care in any case the list of the new american military help to ukraine was published more Heimers missiles it's awesome some american senators and western media resources say that there is corruption in ukraine including military i would agree with that but it's not touching this exact military help from our allies otherwise ukraine wouldn't be successful on the front line so we had the scandals with our previous defense minister reznikov but the corruption wasn't based on the direct military help they did it with food supplies with uniform the stuff like that not with the military units and now finally we have the inspectors from the west from the united states who will monitor the activity what ukraine buys for army and where the military help is going to it should have been done at the first days then ukraine start to receive the military help because we also received the funds to buy food supplies and uniform exactly those funds could have been used for corruption and i am sure that there was corruption because it was uncovered by our independent journalists but somehow our ex-defense minister Reznikov 
is not yet being persecuted. Actually, it's hard to find him. Some say that he left the country and now somewhere in Spain, enjoying his vacation. Exactly one year ago, Russia announced the massive mobilization of their men to the regular Russian army. They mobilized around 300,000 soldiers and continue to do so. According to the information coming from the Russian opposition resources, they hired 20,000 more soldiers each month. Most of them are not from Moscow, but from the very poor villages. They go to the Russian army to earn some funds, but they find mostly deaths. There are also some clues that Russia may start the new massive mobilization in their army to hire this time almost a million soldiers. Now with the modern digital resources, they may find each individual they want to mobilize. Some say that it might happen this autumn, but some say after the Russian elections. I tend to agree with the second variant because Putin needs to secure his power first with the Russian elections, which are coming in March 2024. But I have almost no doubts that it will happen. Russia needs more army men in its army. Probably because of that, Ukraine will mobilize more men to its army too. My friends, I'm gonna keep you updated on situation in Ukraine. Don't forget to press the like to this video. And also, if you want to support my job, you may check out some of the links in the video description just below. Special thanks for my Patreon supporters and the sponsors of my YouTube channel. Guys, you are awesome. I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.